David Garcia is our next presenter. Uh, David has joined the Hub uh, via the Medical University last September. Uh, he builds now his research group on computational social science, which focuses on designing models and analyzing human behavior through digital traces. His main work revolves around the topics of emotions, cultures, and political polarization, combining, st combining statistical analysis of large data sets of online interactions with agent-based modeling of individual behavior. Recently, David could show the gender divide of social media around the world. Please welcome David Garcia. Thank you. Um, so it's my pleasure to present uh, today three thoughts and, and questions uh, where I think that complexity science can help us to understand and to improve the digital society. And by the digital society, I mean our current society where we interact through ICT and through online media. And the first question starts by uh, acknowledging that there are many aspects of emotional life that we do not understand. We don't understand well how our emotions and our well-being interact with the emotions of others. We don't know how it is affected by these new ways of interacting through ICT. And we also don't really know how they depend on the environment and how they really co-evolve with it. And uh, the issue is because psychology for the last century has been constrained to the experimental situation in which you can take few students and you experiment with some conditions and see how they behave. And this has been very useful to give some first knowledge on, on affective life. But uh, experiments can be very artificial. They can create conditions that have nothing to do with real emotional life. Uh, experiments have clear ethical limitations. Uh, people are not particles and you cannot do with them whatever you want. You have some conditions that you need to, to guarantee. And also experiments are not very large scale, so it's very complicated to observe collective behavior in a typical psychological setup. So one thing I want to, to start as a, as a new field uh, is uh, studying affective life or affective science through computational social science and using digital traces and computational models of human behavior to understand our emotions and well-being at scales and at new temporal resolutions. So the Vienna Science and Technology Fund is financing my group for the next eight years to study this, this research topic. And we want to see how and if ICT affects emotional well-being and happiness and whether we can mediate on well-being through the digital medium by new technologies that can help society to be, to be healthier in a mental, mental sense. And I have to say that not only everything is opportunities in, in the digital society, there are also risks and dangers that I see sometimes when I feel that our society is like a cyberpunk novel where some technologies are disrupting society and they are empowering large corporations or they are enabling new kinds of cybercrime or they are even fueling societal conflict. And in this sense, I think complexity science can help us to understand these new kinds of risks. And one way in which we have already learned about this is through the topic of shadow profiles in which we have been able to audit and find that an online social network can make a profile of a person without an account through the information that their friends give on the social network. So it's not a one-person contract between you and the social network, whether you give data, they can get data on you even if you didn't agree to this contract. So the, the effect of this is not just uh, affecting our right to uh, self-determination or to privacy, it has uh, longer and more deep effects. So for example, when we want to exchange or share our emotional experiences with others, we need certain degree of privacy to talk with people close to us about our emotional experiences. And if we start feeling that we're always observed and that our private sphere is disappearing, this is going to affect the way we really talk to each other about our emotions and can have very long-term consequences for our mental health. And also it can create chilling effects in which people stop doing completely uh, uh, appropriate uh, activities because they can feel that they are observed. And perhaps some people are stopping to search about certain topics online simply because they think they're being tracked. Um, and so I think the rabbit hole goes deeper, of course. It's not just about privacy. There are other topics like fake news, polarization, discrimination. But here I want to call... Uh, like other colleagues earlier in the morning, that scientists are not just observing in the society, we also have a responsibility towards acting on it. We are not just natural scientists in complexity science, we are also social scientists. And software and data science can be very empowering um, ways to, to start building a better future and not just envisioning it. 
And one way in which uh, ICDC is starting to happen is through the new scientific field of machine behavior. And this has a parallelism with uh, city science and, and urban science in the sense that when people moved to cities for the first time and they started live in larger groups, they, they had no idea what they were doing. We had to figure out how to build institutions, how to build mechanisms to, to live together in large groups. And now we have just moved to the online medium, so to speak. Uh, we don't really know how this is really affecting us. We are figuring out what we have to do with these bots or algorithms that are mediating in our interaction. And um, software is neither deterministic nor simple. So when we think about the machine and it has cogs, it's easy to predict how it's going to behave. But when you look at the program and you look at its code and the program is, has some experience and is learning, it's intelligent, it's not so simple to predict how it's going to behave and especially how is it going to behave in large groups or with people. So one example for this is, uh, for example, in uh, financial markets, we have most of the volume that is being traded by bots instead of by humans. And there are collective behavior like flash crashes that cannot just simply be predicted by looking at the code of one of these traders. So this new emerging scientific field of machine behavior, uh, and I call it field and not discipline, because it's supposed to be open and not closed for everyone to, to chip in, is trying to study the behavior of intelligent machines on their own terms, to experiment with machines the same way as we experiment with humans, uh, with principles from psychology and social science, to see how they behave in large groups, how they behave in their natural ecosystem, and to be able to tell if they are having a desirable behavior or not, if they are creating discrimination or not, and in fact, to simply say if they are behaving uh, properly or desirably for our society. And that's all for today. Please check my website if you want to know more about this, and thank you very much.